we take great pride in our experience and efficiency in doing this case and we have very minimal complications but there are a few things that can happen during surgery. Number one is there is um, some blood loss during the surgery. The risks of having a transfusion however are about 1 in 50. It's very rare that we have to transfuse anyone after this type of a surgery. Infection is a small risk after surgery. It's about a 1% risk. We give people antibiotics before, during, and after the surgery to help prevent infection. But still with that, a little bit less than 1% of people will have issues with infection. And as soon as we see that, we'll, we'll deal with it, usually with antibiotics. There is a small risk of damage to nerves and blood vessels, but it's very uncommon for that to occur during this uh, procedure. There's also a small risk of having a blood clot. It's, it's pretty rare because most of our patients are young and healthy, but, but it isn't uh, zero risk. It's, it's less than 1%. For that reason, we usually put people on a blood thinner, something mild like aspirin after the surgery, just to help um, to reduce the risk for having a blood clot. The more you can move around, the more active you can be, the more you can pump your ankles, um, th those things will all help reduce your risk for having a blood clot after the surgery. Whatever increases your circulation will help with that. Um, the other risk is we're, by doing this procedure, we're creating uh, controlled cuts in the bone. You can think of it like that. It's controlled breaks in the bone. And so those have to heal. And they do reliably heal in 95% of patients or more. Uh, on rare occasion though, especially in patients who aren't quite as healthy, heavier patients, smokers, diabetics, there are areas of the bone which may not heal. And if that's painful, then later we may have to go back in and do a bone grafting type procedure. But again, that's very rare. And we usually give the bone you know, several months, up to a year to heal up before we would consider doing anything like that. Um, the other risks of surgery are those of anesthesia, and the anesthesiologist will talk in more specifics about the risk of anesthesia, but statistically the risk of having a, a major incident with anesthesia in a young healthy population is pretty small. The, um, the risk of driving to the hospital that morning in your car uh, usually outweighs the risk of the actual anesthetic that we're, we're giving that day. So for most of our young healthy patients, anesthesia risk is, uh, is not zero, but it's, but it's pretty small. And finally, um, whenever we do surgery on the bones or around the joints, there are a certain um, subset of people who, instead of forming just scar tissue, will actually form small islands of bone. It's pretty uncommon, uh, but we watch for that on the x-rays after the surgery. Usually if it happens, it's so small that it doesn't matter and people don't notice it, but it's something that we'll look out for afterwards. It's called heterotopic ossification. And so the, the, um, the procedure where we do the bone cuts or where, the, where we do the hip arthroscopy in those areas where they're healing can sometimes heal overzealously and create some extra bone and we'll be on the lookout for that. The majority of the time nothing needs to be done unless it gets very large or unless it creates uh, pain or blocks motion in some way. What is very common is um, there are some small nerves around, in and around the hip joint that we have to manipulate and move out of the way to do the surgery in a minimally invasive way. And so most people, about 80% of people wake up and have some numbness in the outer part of their thigh. And that's perfectly normal. It does not affect their muscles or their function, it's just a, a dull area in their skin and it has to do with their skin nerve anatomy. It usually takes a few months for that uh, sensation to come back, but it does uh, very slowly over time. It'll start with numbness, you may get some tingling and some burning, and then the, then the nerve wakes up completely in a few months after the surgery's done.